Hey, can you can you get some of your friends together? I I know that you're from the moon, and yeah, and if you get some of your friends, we can all we can all jump to the moon. I know. I I read about it in the Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath. No, you want? Oh, yeah, it'll be fun. Three times Randolph Carter dreamed of the marvelous city, and three times was he snatched away while still he paused on the high terrace above it. All golden and lovely it blazed in the sunset, with walls, temples, colonnades, and arched bridges of veined marble, silver basined fountains of prismatic spray in broad squares and perfumed gardens, and wide streets marching between delicate trees and blossom-laden urns, and ivory statues in gleaming rows, while on steep northward slopes climbed tiers of red roofs, and old peak gables harboring little lanes of grassy cobbles. It was a fever of the gods, a fanfare of supernal trumpets, and a clash of immortal cymbals. Mystery hung about it, as clouds about a fabulous unvisited mountain, and as Carter stood breathless and expectant on that balustrated parapet, there swept up to him the poignancy and suspense of almost vanished memory, the pain of lost things, and the maddening need to place again what once had been an awesome and momentous place. That, my friends, is from the Dream Quest of Unknown Kadoth. Welcome, my friends, welcome once again to Mythos Monday. Yes, Mythos Monday has returned after a very long hiatus. Mythos Monday, where we talk about H.P. Lovecraft's mysterious and horrifying stories. This one is particularly weird. The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath, where Randolph Carter, who has the key of dreams, must journey through the dream world on a quest to find this city, which he had three glimpses of, and then... It was snatched away from him. He saw this mysterious city in his dreams three times. And then he could never dream about it again. So he has to find his way back. He needs to find this mysterious and beautiful city. And why does he feel such a connection to it? Why does it seem so important to him? Well, that's what this story is about and the lengths that Randolph Carter will go in the dream world to find the answers to his questions. The Quest of Unknown Kadath. So, this is a really weird story. It is a short novel. It does qualify as a short novel. One of his shorter ones, along with uh, the case of Charles Dexter Ward in At the Mountains of Madness, this one is very weird, like I say. It's one of his dream stories. He had a series of stories which were all connected to the dream world, or about the dream world. The dream world of H.P. Lovecraft, which is kind of this alternate reality which you can gain access to through your dreams if you're, you know, a very skilled dreamer or if you have the key to the gate of dreams. And the story itself does have a very dreamlike, dreamlike quality. Very beautiful, beautifully written in sections. And also has some sections that are actually genuinely frightening. Because on his quest, Randolph Carter, on his quest to find this city once again, he, he has allies on this quest in the dream world, and he has enemies, and the enemies are pretty terrifying. In fact, even some of his allies are pretty scary. And we get some, other than just Randolph Carter, we get some returning characters uh, in this story. Randolph Carter is in a few stories by H.P. Lovecraft. Randolph Carter, who, is, who at one time lost the key to the Gate of Dreams and then got it back, and is here making his most dangerous journey through the dreamlands, and uh, some of his allies are cats, so that's always a good thing. You know, Randolph Carter always got along with cats. 
Cats, by the way, you find out some important information about cats. You know when the cats, when you have cats and you can't find them, and you're like, where the hell did those cats go? Well, it turns out they go to the moon. Yeah, you didn't know that, but it's true. They just go to the moon, the cats do. They just jump there. They just, cats can jump to the moon. Of course they can. They can even take you with them if they want to. They can, if you just jump in the midst of all these jumping cats, off you go to the moon or wherever else they want to take you. You know, cats are talented that way. So now you know, it's important information to have. H.P. Lovecraft, reading him is helpful. So, yeah, he gets help from some cats uh, against some vicious creatures. And he also gets help from another old friend, which we came across in another story, if you've ever read if you've ever read Pickman's Model, H.P. Lovecraft's short story, Pickman's Model. I will spoil that, <laughs> that story for you now. In that story, Pickman, the painter, painted horrifying pictures about ghouls. Ghouls, these terrifying monsters, the ghouls. And he hung out with ghouls so much, because of course the ghouls were real. He hung out with ghouls so much that eventually the ghouls just took him with them, took him with them and... Pickman became a ghoul, and an important ghoul, as, as it turns out. And, as it turns out, when ghouls are not busy ruining, you know, ruining things and causing subway accidents and eating corpses, uh, they're, they're spending time in the dreamlands, which is handy, because, as it turns out, Randolph Carter knew Pickman uh, back, back in the... Back in the real world, the waking world, he knew Pikmin. And now that Pikmin is this creepy ghoul who leads a bunch of other creepy ghouls, they're still friends. And Pikmin and his ghouls agree to help out Randolph Carter in his quest. And it's a good thing they do because they run into some uh, real trouble against the Night Gaunts, these horrible monsters with wings and they're all, they're all jet black and they have no faces. It's They're, they're creepy. They're, like I said... There's some creepy stuff in here. That's not even the creepiest, really. There's some other really creepy stuff that's, that happens in this story. Including when Randolph Carter, to achieve his quest, has to go head-to-head -head against Nyarlathotep. Yes! Nyarlathotep is in this novel. Our old friend Nyarlathotep is in here. And uh, he might even have to go up against the all-consuming, crawling chaos of Azathoth. Who knows? Lots of stuff going on in this story. But Randolph Carter has to soldier through and make it through his fantastic quest. And the ending of this is actually quite beautiful, really. H.P. Lovecraft was working some stuff out in this novel. It was kind of a practice novel for him. This was never published uh, during his lifetime. He didn't think it was very good. And there are a lot of Lovecraft fans that agree. Uh, not everybody likes this story. It's very episodic. It jumps around a lot. It, yeah, it jumps around a lot. Very episodic. Doesn't follow any kind of traditional structure, really. As a novel, there are no chapter breaks. It just <laughs> goes through one episode after another. But the whole thing is so weird and so strange and so fantastic. It really does have the quality of a dream, that kind of weird oddness that, you know, things make sense in the story, just like things make sense in, the, in a dream that wouldn't make sense any other place or time. There's a lot of that feeling in this story. And H.P. Lovecraft is also trying to work out some stuff in his writing, I think. He's saying goodbye to a kind of story that he had done at one time. He was very influenced by Lord Dunsany and did a lot of stories that were influenced by Dunsany and a lot of his dream stories were influenced heavily by Dunsany. But he's he's moved from that. And he's, he's moved on. And this story is kind of a goodbye to that part of his career, that part of his fiction. And he's moving on to something new. And that becomes a little bit more clear with Randolph Carter and the conclusion of his journey in this story. It's really kind of a beautiful ending uh, that this story has. One of the best, I think, in Lovecraft, frankly. 
And it ends, unlike a lot of Lovecraft stories, uh, on a hopeful note. It's, you know, Randolph Carter doesn't end up, you know, crazy at the end of this story. He's actually in a better place at the end of this story, after all of his horrifying experiences, and he has some terrifying experiences in this story. It's really interesting for a number of reasons, and it's worth it alone just because it's so weird. It is such a weird fantasy. Definitely, I think, if you're interested in H.P. Lovecraft, it's definitely worth reading. Uh, if you're interested in fantasy fiction, H.P. Lovecraft wrote some fantasy, and this is his weirdest fantasy, his most epic fantasy, The Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath. I like it an awful lot. You could find it in this volume, the Necronomicon. You could also find it in the Complete Fiction, of course. You could find it in the third uh, Penguin volume, uh, Dreams in the Witch House and other stories. It's in there, the third Penguin volume. And you can, of course, probably find it for free on Project Gutenberg or, you know, get it for free on your Kindle or super cheap. Easy to get. Easy to get. And really interesting. So, yeah, that's all I have to say, I think, about the Dream Quest of Unknown Kadath. Really interesting story that was never published in his lifetime, but now we can all read it. It's awesome. Okay, guys, I will catch you next time.